Hi, I'm Sherry, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to make the apron tunic and the sleeve tunic in larger sizes. So you will need to go back and watch both of these videos I made to fully understand this video because I'm just going to show what else you need to do on top of the information I've already given. So if you want, if you're a plus size and you want to make either one of these styles, go watch the other videos. I'll put the links down below. Go watch them first and then come back and use this information and put it all together and you will be able to make these in bigger sizes. And thank you so much for watching my videos. So let's get on with it. In case anybody's wondering, I just figured this out or it would have been in the first video. So I apologize for any inconveniences I may have caused people that didn't think about the size it was going to be as they were making it and then it wasn't big enough. So I'm going to show you how you can make it bigger even after you've made one. So here I have some sleeves. And there goes a car. <laughs> We're going to ignore that. Oh my gosh, why are they out there today? Okay, so here we have our sleeves. And what you would do if you're going to make this tunic is measure each sleeve, okay? Or you can just lay them out and clip them and pin them. And then measure four sleeves together. Let's say you wanted this color. And I've got my four sleeves here. I don't know if you can see all the way to the end. Let's go up just a little. Let's go back a little bit. Okay. Okay, so here, here would be my sleeves, okay? Like, here's my sleeves. I, I am actually going to make this into one, a plus-sized one, but I haven't done it yet. I thought this is a perfect time to show you this. So you would measure always all the way the across, and let's say you're missing four inches, okay? So we know you can't just put the four inches in a random location. It's going to have to be broken up between the four seams. It's this seam, this seam, this seam, and then of course these two would be sewn together. So we're going to need four pieces that would basically separate each one by an inch, right? To get our four inches if we want it to be even and still and spread out evenly. So what you can do, if you still have either one of these shirts, what I do is I, I would cut a piece. Here, I can show you on the one I did do. I did this one with fabric. Uh, I did it with a fabric piece. I'm going to show how it would look. And I didn't necessarily, it's not too bad, but the fabric I used here is stiffer. Try to use something that's the same weight of what you got on either side so that it will hang uh, hang better. I mean, this one's okay. It'll wash and it'll soften because this is cotton here. But it would have been better had I used something this exact weight, one of these. But I didn't have them because I'd already made a pinafore. And this was my very first attempt. And I actually like the way it turned out, so we're going to use it as an example. Okay, so you can see here that what I've done is I made a little piece right here that kind of looks like it's one of these sleeves. And if you were making a really colorful one, you could actually take a piece of another cuff. You could just take a piece of another cuff and just put it, a piece of fabric. I mean, you could really make a lot of colors or, or and patterns and things into these. But, and you could even, if you wanted it to flare out even more than it flares out, you could make this go out of flare. I'm just gonna give you some ideas for all you creators out there. The easiest way, I think, would be to take another sleeve. Let's say this was the one you wanted to put in there. And just cut the piece you need out and sew it in. Do you see what I'm saying? And when you get down to the bottom part, what I did, I just made it continue. Like, I just turned this one over. And that's what you would do with the bottom of a piece of a sleeve. Let's say I put this in there. And, you know, and I'm coming down straight, so it's going to be like that. And I would just make sure that I've got it turned under and matching like that all the way around, you know, between, because you want that nice curve so it hangs and has, if you're going for that same look, you'd have to continue the curve here. And the reason you can't just add another sleeve 
if it doesn't pull out right, you won't have the same look. You're going to have a, a completely different look, which is perfectly fine to experiment. That's the whole point of upcycling is that you get to be the creator. So, um, but it, if you want to have the same look as, as when you just sew the sleeves together, however much extra you need, you need to divide that by four and then leave. If you're doing quarter inch seam allowances, let's say I needed an inch, then I've got a quarter inch here, here, and here, here again, because I'm overlapping. You know, so you gotta make that piece uh, two inches wide. And then you'll have your inch, you know, somewhere around there. So I hope that helps. That's how you would size this up. And one of my uh, lovely, one of you lovely uh, viewers pointed out that if you sew them, the back straps on your garment first, and I usually set them, it's usually almost perfect if you just set your straps where the sleeves both come up on the front. But measure it. Are you wide shouldered? Are you narrow shouldered? You might want to move them in. You know, make it, if you're making it for yourself, I usually do somewhere around seven and a half to eight in my store. That's what I usually use as sort of a standard that seems to fit fairly well. And what you're going to do is put your back ones on first if you're making it for yourself. And that way you can flip the straps over and pin the front to where you, where you think you want to fit it. I do my front first because um, I want them to have this curve of the collar. So when I'm sewing, I do my front first. That way I'm not clipping anything off. I've got that cute little curve that's on the collar. That's why I do my front straps that way. Okay, I hope that helps. If anybody has any questions, please put them in the comment section down below or and, and I'll do my best to address them either in a video or just in the comment section. Here's the plus sized apron tunic that I made. And these will take more time. If you're going to put these in your shop, you either take more time and the process is harder than or longer for me right now. Maybe I'll figure out how to streamline it than the, than the process I showed in the first video. But basically, when you come down, you know, we've got our, our two pieces laid out, you know, our two big pieces. And, and I was cutting at an angle here. You're not going to cut at an angle you're going to cut straight out. That allows you to move the seam that's normally here out as far as you need to move it. But however far you go here, you need to go add that much out here. So it ends up using a lot more of your, like you end up using the sleeves as well. So when I sell this now, I have to figure that cost into the garment because normally I take the sleeves and that's a second garment. So if you're doing this on Etsy, take into consideration the extra cost to this for you. Because if you just come out here and you don't add that to the end, it's not going to give you the same look. Because this falls down and that's what gives you the, the, the look of the apron tuning. So I'll say it again. However, from this seam that you normally stop at, on, on the other video you'd normally stop at, what you would have to do, however far you come out on this... That's how much more you have to add to this end. And I just decided to add it after the buttons. I thought that was cute, but you could actually add this piece here if you want your buttons at the end. So another thing I thought would be really cool is to make this adjustable so that during certain times of the year, like if they were wearing a bulky sweater, you know, that they could let that out a little bit. Kind of like the bib overalls, you know, how they got the buttons you can adjust to. But I thought about I could do eyelets and have it laced or just buttonholes and then let it lace. So that's something to think about if you've got an Etsy store or making it for yourself. That's something that you could add there is just make this part adjustable. And I want to show you one thing I did. I'll put pictures in and maybe some video uh, footage on how I did this. But I made this bib part up here first. Instead of sewing the sides together first, I had to do the construction a little bit different. And I'm going to go ahead on some of mine and make tie straps on the top instead of sewing these together. Because if you're really large busted, like see, when you're selling to people, I don't know the shape of that person. So in order to get the, them the best fit I can get them, 
it's kind of tricky because they could be heavier on the top and the middle or the lower section or all the way around. I don't know. And I want them to have a garment that fits them and that they love. So basically in this one, um, what I did was I did tie straps on the top and I made the front and back separate and then I sewed this, them together. I actually, um, and I'll put pictures in there, I actually hemmed these all the way down. And one reason I did that, if they needed more room, they could actually seam rip this into a small stitch and open this up as much as they needed it to open up. You know, I, I just, I, I try, you have to think if you're selling, you have to think about, you know, what your customers need. And sometimes it's a little tricky to, to you know, especially if it's not the size that you are. And, you know, you try to get, I try to get feedback. I try to listen to what is working, you know, for them. I will try to watch what they're buying and, and stuff. So I hope that helps. Um. I'm, uh, if you guys have any questions, um, you can put them in the comment section. And remember, you can make this garment your own. This top, this this square piece here, could be a beautiful piece of fabric, tapestry or tapestry, however you say it. But it doesn't have to be jeans. It could be anything. You could put anything up here for the square. You can, if you shorten this up and make it shorter like this, this will be more like a shirt. So you can, you know, have fun with it. You can alter this and make this many different little things. Uh, uh, and and uh, in this one, I made the back shorter. And when you wear it, it actually comes further down the back. Like it, it shows more of the back. And this one's fun because it's got like a suede double line. So I hope that helps. Um, any questions? Like I said, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer them. But that is how you turn uh, those two garments into plus sizes. That's what I have right now. I'm learning all the time. Okay, I had a viewer ask me how they didn't understand how this you wear this garment. So this one's a little wrinkly. I had it in storage. But basically, this is what they look like on a person like this and the sides are open they asked me about that and you wear them over like leggings or pants or like I suggest if you're gonna do it as a dress just wear a pair of those shorter you know biker shorts or whatever the light ones that way you can have you know not not be girly and have fun in it <laughs> but that's what they look like um, and that's why I said with the adjustable straps if you're bigger chested you're gonna need you know to have your straps longer and that's why I'm going to start making some of mine adjustable because, you know, and body types are all different and I want everybody to be able to enjoy these tunics. So I hope that helps. Well, if anybody has any questions, please put them in the comment section down below. And thank you everybody for commenting and subscribing. I can't believe how many subscribers I have and how everybody's commenting and, and it's, it's amazing and how many people are making things and pretty soon I, I'm going to try to have a place where everybody can post pics of things they make and, and we can hang out. I, I wish it could be more like a, a Discord server, but I'm going to look in stuff and I will let you guys know when I figure it out. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy sewing!